This video was made possible by Brilliant. Start learning with Brilliant for 20% off by being one of the first 200 to sign up at brilliant.org slash H-A-I. If you're from San Francisco, there's a few things you've probably never heard of. Toast without avocados, three-figure rent, Republicans, and the East Cut neighborhood. If you go on Google Maps and search for East Cut, it'll tell you that's this neighborhood between Market Street and the Bay Bridge, even though before a year ago, nobody had even tried to call this area the East Cut. Nowadays, however, the East Cut name is seeping into the real world all thanks to the world's benevolent dictator, Google. Now, of course, Google is amazing and lovely, and I don't mean to be critical at all of such a fantastic organization, but they do have a certain amount of power over, well, everything. More than half of the world's smartphone users have used Google Maps in the past month, and considering that there are 2.5 billion smartphone users in the world, that's a lot. Google Maps is the most popular mapping service in the world, and that means that when someone wants to figure out what something is, they check Google Maps. Quite bafflingly, the benevolent dictator almost started a war in 2010. You see, where Nicaragua and Costa Rica meet on the Atlantic Ocean, Nicaragua believes the border to be this, while Costa Rica believes it to be this. In 2010, a Nicaraguan military troop was sent to the area to do dredging work on the San Juan River. While there, though, the troop just happened to meander onto Calero Island, which, as far as Costa Rica was concerned, was Costa Rica. Now, having a foreign military strut into your country with no prior warning doesn't look great. It looks a whole lot like an invasion, so Costa Rica, being, interestingly, the most populous country in the world without a military, sent 70 police officers to make sure that this wasn't the beginning of the Nicaraguan annexation of Costa Rica. In response, Nicaragua sent an additional 50 troops, and the two parties sort of just had a standoff while the two countries' leaders had a discussion. As it turned out, the few dozen troops that entered Costa Rica had no intentions to single-handedly overthrow a country of 5 million. Their commander was just using Google Maps to navigate what showed the border as this. Costa Rica then went to the International Court of Justice and complained, and then, after years of back and forth, the court ruled that this area was in fact Costa Rica, and so now Google Maps shows it as Costa Rica and Nicaragua lays off the invasions. Unfortunately, Apple missed the opportunity to create a great Apple Maps app. Google Maps does try more or less to follow what people say places are, but sometimes some people disagree on what a thing is. For example, some say New Zealand, others say where. Some say Machia Seal Island is part of Canada, others say it's part of the US, so if you search it on Google, it won't tell you which country it is like it does for the rest of the US or Canada. It'll do the same if you look at a town in Western Sahara, Kashmir, the South China Sea, or any other disputed territory. But perhaps the biggest issue for Google Maps is what to call neighborhoods. You see, in most places, neighborhood names aren't official. They're just decided through what people colloquially call places. People just refer to this area in San Francisco as Russian Hill or this area Telegraph Hill, and at least a few people call this area the East Cut. In 2015, you see, an organization was founded to improve what was then called Rincon Hill. For some inexplicable reason, they decided they needed a rebranding, and they settled on the neighborhood name The East Cut. They updated street signs and their website and everything, but still, when asked, the mayor of San Francisco said he had never heard of the neighborhood. Lucky for the East Cut organization, one of their board members just happened to work at Google, whose offices are in the East Cut, and, according to the New York Times in an article about this debacle, was able to persuade the company to switch the name, which is the most San Francisco story ever. Some neighborhood names on Google Maps are even more baffling, though. In Detroit, Google Maps refers to this area as the Eye, even though really nobody has ever referred to this area by that name. A blogger did some detective work and was able to figure out that Google Maps copied the neighborhood names from a map that some random website published in 2003. Google Maps even copied the misspellings from that map. As it turned out, the Eye was the name of a community watch organization in the area, so there were signs around the area saying the Eye, and somewhere along the line someone got confused and assumed it was the neighborhood name. Still today, that name shows up on Google Maps, and if you really want, you can search and buy real estate in the prestigious Eye neighborhood. In true Detroit fashion, houses start at $8,000. Nobody's really sure exactly how Google determines neighborhood names, but once they do, that name essentially becomes official. According to Google Maps, Machia Seal Island is both Canada and the US at the same time, but you know it's also two things at once? Quantum objects, since, thanks to quantum superposition, these particles can be in two or more quantum states at the same time. This is what Schrodinger's cat is about. It's like if a cat was both dead and alive at the same time. Quantum mechanics is like magic that's happening in our world right now, and it's sort of complicated, but Brilliant is the expert in teaching super complex things in an understandable way. If you take their quantum objects course, you'll go away knowing what only specialized physicists understand. 
Of course, Brilliant has plenty of other great courses too, and if you want to take them, you can try a selection of them for free by signing up at brilliant.org slash HAI, and then, by being one of the first 200 to use that link to upgrade to premium, you'll get 20% off.